Hey guys, it's Mike here, and welcome to another edition of Dragon Ball Super Reviews and Predictions, in which I'm going to be reviewing Dragon Ball Super Episode 46, and then giving my predictions for what's going to happen in Dragon Ball Super Episode 47. Well, a lot of stuff happened on this newest edition of Dragon Ball Super, and there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So, without further ado, let's get started. So this episode essentially picked up where the last episode left off, with Goku versus this copy Vegeta. And as time continued to pass, we saw that Vegeta was continuing to disappear as they had initially stated that over the course of five minutes after the initial host is absorbed and his power taken, the original host, or Vegeta in this case, would disappear forever. But as Goku continued to fight this copy of Vegeta, it appeared that the original Vegeta was pretty conflicted about what was going on. And in fact, at some point, it seemed like he actually wanted his copy to be able to defeat Goku because I guess that he felt it was some kind of defeat against himself if his copy were to lose. In in the fight itself, it seemed like Goku and Copy Vegeta essentially started off their fight equal to one another. However, Copy Vegeta started to get the advantage over Goku and started pummeling him into the ground until Goku started to utilize his instantaneous movement or teleportation technique. And he started to use this to fly all around Vegeta in different directions and stated that apparently he's able to do this now with his teleportation, which does make sense considering how we did see him utilize it in his fight against Beerus. And then Goku starts to seem to get the advantage over for the copy Vegeta, landing several blows on him in the process. But then again, Vegeta chimes in saying, you call yourself me, why wouldn't you be able to dodge that? And essentially acting like his copy should be defeating Goku in a fight. I guess all this is supposed to tie back into his overall pride that he has and the fact that he never wants to lose to Goku in a fight because he is his rival, but ultimately it does seem kind of nonsensical that he's cheering on the guy who, if he wins, will ultimately result in Vegeta's own death. But Vegeta does eventually seem like he has had enough after he's reminded that he should not be cheering on the guy who's going to lead to his own death, and jumps up and tries to punch him straight through the stomach. However, he passes straight through the copy of Vegeta, as his body is essentially losing all of its existence, and he is slowly fading away. And then, in sort of a funny scene, Vegeta tells his copy that he better win, but also tells Goku that he better win, leading to both of them kind of scratching their heads and saying, which side is he on? But with that, the gloves were taken off, and Goku who transformed into his Super Saiyan Blue transformation. However, this was not all, as the copy Vegeta also revealed that he can also transform into Super Saiyan Blue, and rather his power is not simply the power of Vegeta's base form. So again, the scene essentially proves that once again, Goku and Vegeta in their base forms are significantly more powerful than Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks, and pretty much everyone else in Z at this point in time, and then they get that much more powerful in their blue forms. And it's at this point that Pota Jusu reveals to Vegeta that apparently that binky thing that he used as a key to keep away the super sacred water actually happens to be something that he could put within his mouth to keep it so where the effects of the fading away don't happen in the same amount of time that they're supposed to, and it kind of delays the effects of him fading away forever. And it's kind of funny that we do see Vegeta just put it in his mouth, not really seeming to know what it is, and, uh, you know, it's kind of another subversion of our ideas that Vegeta's supposed to be this ultimate badass, and now he has a binky in his mouth like Koenma. But Goku and the copy of Vegeta start going all out, hitting each other in their Super Saiyan Blue forms, and even though it's kind of a cool action sequence, I still have to wonder, why is the universe not being destroyed by the two of them as they continue to fight? I mean, after all, Goku and Beerus were destroying the universe, and Goku was weaker back then, and Beerus was not going all out at all. So, realistically, you would think that these two would also be destroying the universe, but it's Dragon Ball Super, and I guess it really doesn't matter at this point. But then we do get into another kind of subplot where Pota Jusu, Trunks, and Goten go along with Minaka to the original site of where the super sacred water was unsealed, trying to find some kind of means to defeat it. But while they're exploring where all this went down, apparently some of the water had been left behind, perhaps to ensnare people who came trying to find a way to defeat it, and started to come after them, chasing them, trying to absorb them into itself, just as it did with Vegeta, Grills, and everyone else so far. And there's a funny scene when they're running away where Jocko actually falls to the ground, and the water just simply goes around him and continues to follow the more powerful foes, which of course Jocko was very pissed off about because he is a super elite galactic patrolman and he believes that he should be absorbed just like anyone else. 
But as Goku and Vegeta continue to clash and Trunks and everyone else has made their way over to Vegeta, the water followed them and tries to absorb Trunks. However, Vegeta jumps in the way, attempting to sacrifice himself and to stop the creature. But just then, to save the day, Minaka accidentally steps on the creature, stepping on its nucleus and basically shattering its body and its power. And during this point in time, Goku takes advantage, charging up the Kamehameha and blasting the copy of Vegeta, destroying him once and for all. Which naturally returns Vegeta to full power, and then we basically find out how Minaka defeated him. Goku once again believes that Minaka is super powerful, and they seal away the sacred water once and for all. And then to wrap up the episode, they make their way back to Earth, and we see that Pan has now had that binky in her mouth as well, and Vegeta is freaking out because he didn't even realize that it was for babies. Or that would have been all that happened in the episode if we didn't cut to what seemed to be another distant future. As we saw our first glimpses of him, we saw we saw the Capsule Corp logo, we saw the sword, and then we saw that silhouette as we see this destroyed future in the distance. And then suddenly the light flashes and we see an old character and an old friend who's right about to be reintroduced into this series. Future Trunks. And that's basically the end of the episode that's going to lead into the next coming arc, this Future Trunks arc that's going to shake and shape the course of the history of this series and this franchise forever. Overall, I thought this was a pretty decent episode. The action was alright, although the motivations of Vegeta and certain characters did seem kind of questionable, especially considering that Vegeta was cheering on someone who he knew was not really himself and whom he knew would inevitably lead to his own destruction, saying that basically if he lost a go Goku, he didn't even feel like living in the first place. I thought that was all kind of ridiculous, and the animation was alright at times. Ultimately, the best part of the episode, as most people were pretty much tuned into this episode just to see, was essentially the ending of the episode where we got to see Future Trunks again for the first time in the show since the end of the Cell Saga. Although, looking at him, it does seem kind of strange that once again he has blue hair instead of the purple hair that he's known for. And a lot of people are saying, oh, Toriyama originally created him with blue hair, but that's obviously not true true because his hair in the manga was purple, and Toriyama based him off of Bulma's original blue hair that was in the manga. So all the people are going to comment down below, oh, his hair probably changed color over time. Well, in Dragon Ball Super, they showed Bulma as a toddler, and she still had blue hair, and then the future, they show her again, and she still has blue hair. So, no. I don't really understand why they decided to make his hair blue in this case. It's not really that big of a deal, but it's already showing that there's going to be some kind of inconsistencies that simple facts checking would have automatically solved. I mean, all you had to do is rewatch Kai, which you just redone recently, to see that he does not have blue hair normally, but maybe that was too much, or maybe now Trunks has Super Saiyan blue base? Who knows? I guess we're gonna have to find out in the next episode to come. But with that being said, let's get into the next episode preview and talk about my predictions. Well, it seems in the next episode of Dragon Ball Super, we're gonna be spending the majority of the episode in the future, and Trunks' seemingly ruined future. And it's kind of strange, as we know, that Trunks did fix the future after he returned, he helped to rebuild after destroying the androids and killing Cell, so realistically everything should be fine again, but it seems like there's some horrors that are happening in the future right now, and it all has to do with this character that we've talked about in the past, that Toei themselves and Toriyama themselves have talked about, and that is this Black Goku. Now, it doesn't appear that we end up seeing this Black Goku in any of these flash-forwards or any of these time skips the future Trunks' timeline, but we do see some kind of silhouettes of it. We do see some creature who is attacking Trunks and who seems to be the one who is destroying everything in sight. And in fact, we do see that he and Trunks are clashing with his sword and the claws or whatever this character happens to be. Now, it's very strange that we did happen to see this promo art of Black Goku and future Trunks in the future, but what we're seeing so far doesn't really seem to look anything like him at all. It could perhaps be Trunks just having some kind of recollections, or it could be like what the anime did, where they were originally talking about the androids, and they showed these creatures who looked nothing like the androids, who were killing Dr. Jiro and, you know, essentially wreaking havoc until we eventually found out what they really looked like after all. Either that, or this Black Goku character truly isn't Goku after all, or has some sort of evil demonic powers at his disposal, and who knows, maybe he could have even summoned
summoned one of these minions as his henchman. I mean, King Piccolo had a lot of minions who he summoned, so maybe this Black Goku, through his evil powers, somehow is able to create avatars like Darkseid or something like that to attack Trunks. It's not really known at this point in time, but just from looking at this, it seems like that theory about how the Mikaioshin are the ones who took Goku, or basically that there's some evil demonic force who is controlling him or has given him these new powers, is kind of starting to come into realization, kind of seem like that's actually what happens or what is going to happen in this future arc, but I guess we're gonna have to wait and see. And there is another thing I did want to point out real quick. It appears that in this future timeline, what they're kind of hinting at is that maybe Trunks and Mai are in a relationship. Now, if you look at Mai right now, it doesn't really look like she's that old. She kind of looks like she's more or less the same age as Trunks, so Trunks is like 30 years old right now. Mai should be much older than even Bulma. I mean, she was already an adult back in Dragon Ball when she and the Pilaf gang were going after Bulma and Goku and trying to get all the Dragon Balls, but why is she seemingly the same age as Trunks now? And the only way that this would make any sense whatsoever is if perhaps this Trunks is the current timeline Trunks in the future, and basically my, you know, still wish for youth along with the Dragon Balls like they did in Battle of Gods, and they never really talked about it in Super. They never really have even hinted at their relationship at all in Super. Maybe it's because that they knew this was coming, so they just, you know, put it in the background or made it seem like it wasn't going to happen and only future Trunks is going to have this relationship instead of current timeline Trunks. But already it seems like there are some really strange questions that are arising simply from this next episode preview, so hopefully they're going to end up answering it, but I suspect in the next episode it's mostly going to be future Trunks. We're going to see some different random stuff with Goku and Piccolo farming, you know, the radish farming or whatever they end up doing, you know, for Goku's quote-unquote job when he's not fighting the forces of evil or training. And basically, we're going to just get all this foreshadowing and this backstory leading into this future Trunks arc, which I can't really wait for because it already is starting to look really serious. The, even the music was different in this next episode preview, and there's so much stuff to come that I really can't wait to see. But in either case, this has been my review for Dragon Ball Super Episode 46 and my predictions for Episode 47 in the series to come. Let me know your own thoughts down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? And what do you think is going to happen in the episodes to come? Also, also, are you really excited about future Trunks, or at this point in time, even after seeing this next episode preview, are you just kind of saying, I don't really care, and this is kind of a retread? Because there are still some people out there who think that. Let me know down below. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and as I always say, stick around, because there's a lot more to come in the future. <laughs>